give the Lord praise in this room. Would you just lift your hands to the Lord and worship Him? And, and. I want to ask you to take your Bibles and open them to the New Testament book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then the New Testament book of Acts. We are in many ways picking up where we left off two weeks ago. We're picking up where we left off one week ago. Two weeks ago we were bringing to a close our study in the Gospel of Matthew. We took that journey through the Gospel of Matthew. We see that King Jesus has come to this world. He is King. The Gospel of Matthew lays that out. We see his authority. And from the very beginning, we said the question is, is whether or not we will bow to his authority. The question is not whether he is the authority. The question is whether or not our hearts will bow to his authority in following him and being obedient to him, walking by faith in him. We saw his life, his death, his burial. We celebrated on Easter his resurrection. And then the next week, Taylor came and he taught us from the very words of Jesus, the Great Commission, this command of Jesus to go and make disciples of all nations, to teach them everything that he had commanded. And what we do really week by week by week is obedience to that, is just we, we tend to be obedient to that Great Commission of Jesus. He said, go make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And even today when you saw those baptisms and you heard each one of those standing beside a person say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Again, just obedience to Christ of saying, it's not in the name of Watkinsville, it's not in the name of Carlos, it's not in the name of Brooke or Dave. Or it, it's, we're baptizing today proclaiming that our faith and trust is in Jesus Christ. Our faith and trust is in the Son, it's in the God, it's in our God, it's in the Holy Spirit. That's the authority that we have to baptize someone. Today we keep following along. What, what happened? I mean, did, when Jesus gave those words, did, did people say amen and go home? They obeyed. We have the account of that. In the book of Acts, you begin to see chapter 1. They were, they were scared, they were trying to remember what they were supposed to do. They come together in Jerusalem in an upper room and then the Holy Spirit comes. We call it the day of Pentecost. Fire from heaven falls and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter stood and he spoke boldly the word of God. And from there they began to obey those words of Acts 1-8 where Jesus said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And I want to tell you, I'm so thankful this morning that Jesus said, and the ends of the earth. Because on that day in Jerusalem, Watkinsville, Georgia, was the ends of the earth. And we have been blessed because people have been obedient to the Great Commission to be willing to go to their Jerusalem, their Judea, their Samaria, people not like them, even to the ends of the earth. And here we are gathered in this room today as a church, lifting praise to the Lord, teaching the things that Jesus has commanded. And look in Acts chapter 13. In Acts chapter 13, you see that the gospel is moving beyond their Jerusalem in other parts of the world in Acts chapter 13 verse 1 in a city of Antioch there was a church and how did the church arrive in Antioch how did it happen in Antioch well don't miss this Antioch this Antioch was a town 300 miles north of Jerusalem, about 300 miles north of Jerusalem. That's about as Watkinsville to Destin, Florida, is about 
300 miles. So about 300 miles north, there was a church. And there were people gathered there. And we have their names. It says there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. Wow, what a morning. What a day. Praying, fasting, worshiping. Barnabas, Saul, go. And then what you have in Acts chapter 13 through Acts chapter 28 is the story of what happened from Antioch and beyond. And this began... What's recorded in Acts, three separate missionary journeys. Like last week, we know that Robbie and Jacob went to Nepal. And they were in Nepal, and there were people who believed the gospel in Nepal. There were people who were baptized, being people who were baptized in Nepal. And you know what happened? They came back from that missionary journey. And this week we've been getting a report of what God did in Nepal. Now, we got the report before they got home. Barnabas and Saul had to travel all the way back home to tell their story. Uh, Text and pictures outran uh, Robbie and Jacob before they could get back here uh, to tell us. But it, it was a missionary journey. And Acts records three missionary journeys and and. And one of the most fun things for me, how many, how many of you, you have a written copy of a Bible in your hand? Raise it up. Let me see it in this room. Just lift your Bible up high. All right? Now, now put those Bibles down. That is a beautiful sight, by the way. How many of you have a Bible that have maps in the back of it? Lift it up high. You have maps in the back. How many of you look at the maps when you get bored with the preaching around here? No, no don't, don't raise. Put those Bibles down. This is, that's, that's what I would do. And I just, I just love those maps. And in most Bibles that have maps, there will be a page or two that say uh, Paul's first missionary journey, Paul's second missionary journey, Paul's third missionary journey. And it tells the story of how the gospel went and it spread. And what we're doing today, praise the Lord, the gospel goes from Acts 13 to Acts chapter 28 right down, just fast forward, just through hundreds of years, right here to Watkinsville, Georgia, where we're gathered in a place, still proclaiming what Jesus taught, still sending people out to share the good news of Jesus Christ. That's why we said last Sunday that we're what? Say it with me. Still going. Still going. Still going. And I want to talk about that. I laid out for you last week five um, elements of still going. Those are in front of you right now. And I just want to highlight those again, that this is what it looks like for us to go. And specifically, we're thinking about from now to 2030, because 2030 is our 150th birthday as a church. And we're saying, here's where we, we're going. Just little blips. There'll be some other things along the way, stops. But these, these are the things we're... Sensing in our heart that God's leading us to do to strengthen our culture of prayer, evangelism, and discipleship, to love our community through ministries of compassion, to maximize our ministry space, and plant churches, to continue to reach unreached people groups, and raise our standard of giving and address our debt. And those, those five elements of still going, and what I want to invite you to do with me today is to dive right into the middle of those five. And I believe one of the most monumental moments in the history of the life of Watkinsville First Baptist Church. Now, I, I'm, not, I'm not overselling it. I've been overcome this week just thinking about this moment in the life of our church and how, Lord willing, years to come, there would be uh, people say, I was there that Sunday when we unpacked that. And what I'm talking about is diving in right here at maximizing our ministry space and planting churches 
And if you had this on a screen today on your phone, you'd do something like this. You'd put both fingers right in the middle of that page, and you'd just open up those fingers like that to just make that picture kind of maximize. You'd zoom in to see greater detail. And what I want to ask you to do today is zoom in with me on this very specific piece of planting churches. Of planting churches. Now, to help me explain this and unfold this and unpack this, I want to ask our executive pastor, Joel Shinpo, to come and join me. And we're going to set up a spot here and talk to you for a little bit of what it looks like specifically to zoom in on church planting. Y'all welcome Joel Shinpo uh, to the stage this morning. He's already been up here getting us started. And I uh, want to answer some questions and talk through this and and um, and and uh, just see where God takes us. Now, when we talk about church planting, now I want to make sure I don't want to leave you out, Sherry. I'm gonna we gotta come all the way around over here. It, um, um, when we talk about church planting, that is not a new uh, part of our mission. Uh, we we were a church that started out of Mars Hill. Baptist Church in 1880. I don't know all the history of that. I honestly, I don't know if people were mad at each other. I don't know if people were excited about it. I, I have no idea. Let's just assume uh, all the good. And if you know different, no need to tell me, all right? And, but 10 people met in the basement of a Methodist church, and that became Watkinsville First Baptist Church. And, uh, and here we are today. And even in the last couple of uh, decades, we've been a part of church planting, yes, in places in Africa, yes, in Boston, but locally we've been a part of church planting. And, and I just, I want to remind you that 12 years ago, we sent people and gave money for the planting of Calvary Bible Church, where today Thomas Settles is the pastor. He was the starting pastor of that church, and we sent people out from our church and resources and, and Calvary is still operating, thriving today. That was 12 years ago, 10 years ago, celebrated last week. Living Hope Church on Lexington Road under the leadership of Dev David Holt. We sent out people, we sent out resources. And uh, church is thriving on Lexington Road today called Living Hope. And then seven years ago, we sent out Mark McAndrew as they went to plant North Avenue Baptist Church people, resources, and today that church is, uh, is, is thriving and alive, and today we're back again to talk about uh, a new church plant in the Five Points area of Athens. And so as we think about uh, church planting, just know it's already been in our going, it's been in our heart to see people sent out, to send resources, to send people, and, and, and see new churches plant to, to, to reach lost people. Joel, I, just think about church planting, and I want you to talk a little bit about why church planting. Yeah. Why, why, why do we do that? Yeah, and you've already taken us to that part in Acts. I mean, you know, first off, that's what we see modeled in the New Testament. We see it modeled in the book of Acts. We see, as Paul goes out on those missionary journeys, him start these churches because when we go to make disciples as Jesus commanded the natural result is the raising up of new churches uh, it's funny because I have these conversations with people as we talk about planting new churches and uh, I mean and I'm talking about I've had conversations with people who have no church affiliation at all and some that do have church affiliation and in those conversations, it's amazing, it, um, you know, and I think probably it's part of just being a pastor and a minister, you're thinking about this, but you'll talk to someone, and maybe that's you this morning, you'll say, yeah, we're talking about starting a new church, and they're like, what? Start, like, you start new churches? Like, like all these churches were just here and existed and, like, you know, had never been started. Like, somebody put a map and said, well, we'll put one here, here, and here, and, you know, and, and they just were there. But, yes, it's... it's um, what Carlos has been saying, it's the fact that 10 people said, let's start this church and look what God has done to this point. And God puts this on the hearts of people as they go out and they make disciples. 
they go out and they uh, spread the gospel, we see new churches start. And so it's, it's a pattern for us uh, in the New Testament. It's a model for us to follow. And it's, it's from the command of Jesus to go and make disciples. So that's why we do it. That's why we go and start new churches. You know, um, I want to say this. I think this is important as we talk about it, that uh, I, I was, our daughter this past week has been sick. And uh, she's had hand, foot, and mouth. And if you've ever gone through that, that is no fun. Uh, several of our other kids had it when they were really <laughs> little. <laughs> yeah. I think this rash is fine. It's, it's, it's no big deal. Several uh, of our other kids had it when they were young and and like, okay, they, they worked through, it, was, it didn't seem as big a deal, but our daughter who's six had it, um, it, it was been a while, okay, um, and, and she's just been miserable, she, uh, like, last weekend, we're, we're not sleeping, she's got these ulcers in her throat, and, and, you know, when, when she doesn't sleep, mom and dad aren't sleeping, and so it's, we're exhausted, day after day of this. We we're, we're having to go to the doctor. It's costly. It's inconvenient. It's all those things. And uh, she, her st- stomach kept hurting as she was walking through this. And she called me over and said, Daddy, can you, can you rub my tummy? And so I'm sitting there. I'm rubbing her tummy. And she said, oh, I'm hurting so bad. You just, oh, your heart goes out to her. And I'm rubbing her tummy. And, and she just puts her hand on my head and starts rubbing my head <laughs> as I'm rubbing her tummy. And I had this moment, I was like, man, I'm so glad I get to be a dad. I'm so glad that I get to help raise this little girl up. And along with my other four kids. And I think that's kind of a moment and an opportunity that we have right now as a church. To think of us as this parent (laughs) who gets to send out. And it's going to be costly. It's going to be a little exhausting. But in it, we're going to look back and say, wow, we're so proud that we get to be a part of this. What an opportunity that we had to see the gospel go forth and a new gospel outpost, a new church get started in a place that needs it right now. One of the things that you learn as you begin to study church planting is uh, people who study lostness and study people coming to know Christ, that the two uh, arenas where the most people uh, come to know Christ, the two most effective evangelistic uh, tools, if you will, uh, of people coming to know Christ, uh, number one is uh, together are uh, church planting and vacation Bible school. those, Those two things, new church plants and vacation Bible school reach more lost people with the news of Jesus Christ than any other uh, single evangelistic um, method or tool or uh, advance. And so uh, what happens in church planning is you see lots of lost people come to know Christ and people who are unchurched come to be a part of a church. In fact, I just uh, mentioned to you these three churches already that uh, we were part of helping to plant Calvary and Living Hope and North Avenue, I talked with each of their pastors this last week, and I said, hey, just give me a little picture of what's going on. And when you take those three churches and combine them together, more than a thousand people are worshiping together in those three churches. Now, let's just, for just round number sake, say that we're a church of 2,000. And, and there's three churches that combined are an, another thousand people. If we had never been a part of planning those churches, do you think today we would be a church of 3,000? No way. No way. But in some ways you could say we're a church of 3,000 be, because they, they've reached so many people in places that we would have never been able to reach here at Watkinsville. And 
those of you waiting to get in the parking lot this morning were thinking, and no way we would have 3,000 mm -hmm. people here on this piece of property. And so, uh, but God, through church planning, has allowed the reach of the gospel to go much further. And I talked to, when I talked to Mark uh, at North Avenue and David at Living Hope, I, I, I briefly touched base with them this week too, and was talking a little bit about what we'd be talking about. And as you think about church planning as an effective, just a hugely effective method for evangelism, of reaching new people, it was interesting. In our conversations, that's what came to the surface, is they talked about not just that, okay, we've seen things grow and we have not just 50 people, we have a couple hundred people now. It was, there was so-and-so, this girl who came to our church and she came to our church and she got connected to our body. She got connected to our body. She started hearing about Jesus. And, when she, and, and you won't believe what God did in her life. It was, it was like that. It was those stories of the one who's coming to Jesus. And, and so when we think about that, it's not just in the numbers, it's in the individuals. We talk about a church plant in five points. So why, why five points? I want to try to answer that question, why that area? And when I say five points, again, thinking specifically in Athens, uh, the corner, the intersection there, there's a red light, and you've got the fire station on one corner, a gas station on a corner, marker seven on a corner, and the running store on the other corner. That's what I'm talking about is just the central uh, spot on the map of five points, and, and you just come out from there uh, a mile. Um, I think you told me uh, what was the number uh, you're going to mention a little bit yeah, uh, uh, demographics. 43,000 people within that two mile radius. Yeah. So I uh, think right there and what we discovered was is that uh, there's a gap in the map. There's a gap on the map of uh, a church that would say uh, let's open our Bibles together and see what God has to say and mm -hmm. I think this, you have this map there in front of you and you locate on that map uh, you can see Prince Avenue's current location out on 78. Green Acres Baptist Church uh, is located there on Barnett Shoals Road. You come around to Living Hope on Lexington Road. You come on around the loop to North Avenue. You come on around the loop to Calvary Bible. Within that loop, and, and we're just we're, we're looking at churches that we know about, connected to, obviously got Baptist churches on there, Beach Haven Baptist Church, a place where... You're teaching the Bible, and you look at that map, and you go right into five points. And what it began to occur to me is that it's really awkward right there at five points to, to get to a, a church where you would say, let's, let's open our Bibles, a, a, a local church right in that community. And, and so that's the, that's the spot. It's not so much about planning a church in Athens as it is planning a church right there uh, in the five points area. Uh, a little more about the demographics there. Yeah, so just to say that again, 43,000 people within a two-mile radius. And so when you think about, do we have enough churches for all the people there? We don't have enough churches, you know, and that's a part of us seeing the need to say, let's, let's get a church there. Let's get a church there that loves the Bible, that loves Jesus, that wants to make disciples. And uh, within, so in, within that range of 43,000 people, it's very young. Uh, 80% of the population is 40s and under. Obviously, a big part of that slant is with college-age people. But believe it or not, it's not all college-age people. Uh, in those neighborhoods around there, we have a large population of people in their 30s and 40s and then on up. And so it's, it's young, but um, it's influenced by the campus. But then there's just a growing population of, um, in those neighborhoods along with uh, right there in that pocket, a great number of international uh, families and students, um, and that's a huge part of what we see God wanting to do there, of people saying, we, we have a real heart to do some ministry right here with some of the internationals who, um, uh, you know, some people need to be right there in their neighborhood to go to church, uh, and that, that's the internationals, that's some of the families that live in there, so that um, they can walk to church, and, and so that's a part of this conversation as well. So we are, as you look at the demographics, you can see that it's, it's everything. 
It's all uh, ethnicities, it's all income levels, it's all political affiliations, it's, it's all generations. And so we hope to make an impact in that whole spectrum of people. Again, just expanding out a little bit more details, what does that look like, people, timelines, uh, I want to begin to uh, unpack that and what I want to just say in this room today about this is that um, you're uh, sitting before you right now uh, and Joel Shinpo will be the lead pastor at uh, the Five Points Church. And when you walk out of this room, I don't want there to be any question or doubts about, wait a minute, who's, who's leading there? Who's the point person there? Who are we sending? And, the, and the, 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 the truth story sentence is, is that Joel Shinpo and his wife Jennifer and their kids are going to be diving into that community at Five Points to lead that new church plant. So uh, that's, that's out there. You hear that? know that that's what's going on and I want you Joel to talk a little bit about just the the story of the calling and how that's developed between yeah. us and our church yeah. and your heart talk so, a little bit about that I'm kind of I'll go back uh in, in a story like this it's going back pretty far it's going back five years uh like I can't <laughs> I I could go back further just different things that God's done in my heart in my life I think to bring me here to this place but I have to start at least five years ago and that, because that's when you and I first started having this conversation. And so this is a five-year conversation happening within our team uh, of just praying, of discerning. And uh, it, funny enough, it happened at a time when um, we had one staff member on our team that was exiting. And Carlos looked around and said, hey, if anybody else is thinking about going somewhere, can you let me know kind of early on? <laughs> I'd like to know. And, um, and I sat down with him and I said, look, you know, God's put, doing stirring in my heart. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know how. And, and so we started praying and uh, working through that. And I, I knew that God was moving me to a place where, okay, it's time for you to jump in and, and, and take on some sort of like lead pastor type role. And so we were having that conversation, we were praying, and then the opportunity arose as we started talking and saying, look, we could, what about a church here? What about church right there in five points? And more of that was developed. We were talking with our pastoral team about it. Uh, there was a lot of excitement ideas, thoughts, and fast forward to February of 2020, Jennifer and I sat down with our church leadership team, and we presented to them, here's what we'd like to do, we, here's what we see our church doing, we, we talked through it together as a group, lots of excitement, lots of encouragement, that was February of 2020, and they said, let's talk about it next month. <laughs> Next month came, and you know what our conversation turned to at that point of March of 2020. And so um, Carlos and I were talking, and all through that season, okay, yeah, like, we're, we're going to figure this out at some point. Who knows when? We don't know what the world's going to look like. And I think, you know, even right there, Sean uh, yeah. Mills was on our staff. He left in June of 2020. Yeah. And a few weeks passed, and I came to Joel, and I said, you know, basically, you got to put the five points conversation, what we're talking about there, that's got to just settle for a little bit. I need you to be our executive pastor. And, and, I, and I told him from day one, I, I know that one day you're going to be a lead pastor somewhere. There's no doubt in my mind. I see that, believe in that. But right now, I need your help. And our church needs your help. And that's what he's, he, he dove in and he's been doing that. And, and we're we're back in yeah. this conversation yeah. now. And so for three years now, uh, it's been us saying, okay, when, when would be the right time for this as we've prayed, as we've continued to work? And here's what's really cool. In that delay, if you will, God has done a lot. Uh, he's raised up people. He's raised up other partners. We're going to talk about one of those partners in a second. And this is so exciting, this part of it that, that we'll get to. And, um, and as, again, as we've been waiting and praying, um, we said, let's, let's start working that direction. And so there was a group of us um, that started getting together every week in that neighborhood. And uh, so we'll, we'll do it again tonight. Um, every Sunday night we get together, we pray together. 
We do prayer walks. We go talk to people. We, we're just in that community every Sunday night, uh, and we've had anywhere from, I don't know, five people to 35 people on a given night. And uh, we've prayed together, and we've just asked God, would you show us what's next? Would you show us what's next? And, and continually tried to be obedient in that. And so we look back now and we say, for a year now, people have been praying and meeting and talking, and just that burden is on our heart to say, we need to see a church started. You hear kind of place and person or people. I want to say some things that this church plant is not. Um, this church plant in Five Points is not a second location for Watkinsville First Baptist. We're not, um, it's not a satellite of Watkinsville First Baptist Church. This is a, will be a local autonomous uh, church that has a pastor whose name is Joel and has uh, people there. And, um, and so um, what this is, is is the birth of a new body. It's a, it's a parent church uh, giving birth. It's a, it's, a, it's a family sending out. Uh, I, I, don't, I mean this with absolute respect. It's, it's a family sending out their, their kids. To, to go and, and now uh, be a part of what God's calling you to do. It's a leaving and a cleaving as a new body of believers. And, and so I want to be clear. And, and I don't know what images come to your mind when you think about church. And I would, I would ask you, don't think of these buildings of Watkinsville First Baptist with a stacked stone sign out on the road as being in five points. Uh, we don't know what it will look like we just know it'll be new we know it'll be young we know that just that there won't be a full offering of things to begin with there'll be some basics that a new church plant can do and be a part of and um but it it it, it no idea that the size the place we don't have a place we, we have people that are coming together a lot of different models some people build a building and gather the people uh, we don't have a building. There's some people that are coming together uh, to want to be a part of it, to support it, to be involved with it. And that's one of the big things we're praying about, Lord, is where can this uh, church meet uh, when they get together in some kind of physical location. Uh, who will help get this church started? It's a very exciting piece to this. Uh, already you see our church is involved with this. Uh, by that, that means that some of you uh, God will call to be a part of uh, uh, this new church plant. Some of you, God may call for a short amount of time. God may call some of you to be there for the life of that church. Some of you may support from here. Uh, so it, it, uh, it'll be us. But also excited that Prince Avenue Baptist is going to partner uh, with us as well. Really excited about the dynamic of a community of a community of churches coming together to be a part of this. We've had several meetings with Josh and, and love that brother. He's a kindred spirit and, and uh, with Sky there, Sky Pratt, and um, they're uh, sending people, they're sending money, like, like we're giving money, sending people, we're, we're, we're working on this together. In fact, next Sunday, much of this story that you're hearing today, Joel will have an opportunity at Prince Avenue next Sunday to talk to their church family about what's going on and what will be happening there in Five Points. And, and there'll be other churches. We've, we've talked to uh, pastors at, at Green Acres. We've talked to um, other, like he mentioned, the, the three churches we've been a part of already. Uh, but just want you to kind of see and know who's coming around that. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit of a, a, a timeline in front of us. So talk a little bit about the timeline. Yeah, so uh, this isn't happening next week. Uh, we're not quite at that point. We don't, we don't know a lot of things. It's very fluid at the moment. But our goal is to um, start to ramp things up, start to look for logistical type things and put people together, build up a, a, a pastor, an elder team, and to um, put leadership and launch team together, do all those things over the next uh, six months with the hope that in 2024, possibly as soon as January of 2024, we could see a church meeting weekly in that neighborhood. Uh, so that is our goal and hope, and, uh, and we just know 
Lord, whatever way you want to take it, we're in your hands, but, but that's what we're putting on paper right now. A lot of work to do, a lot of praying, a lot of deciding on uh, things related still. So you're, we're looking again about eight months out to that weekly gathering. And um, you know, one thing that comes up maybe immediately, well, what about an executive pastor here? I'll just say to you that uh, we'll continue to have that role uh, already looking, praying through that, and we believe that maybe before uh, Joel steps into that in January, somebody's here. If not, definitely by January 1, that, that role would be filled, and we continue to operate with that model here, and that, and that, that search mm -hmm. has already begun. Mm -hmm. um, what are we asking for today? We're asking for you to consider if you should participate in some way asking you to pray for this. We're putting it out months in advance to begin to pray about it. Um, the advance of God's kingdom is not something the enemy wants. Um, this isn't like just opening up another Home Depot on the other side of town. Uh, it's, this isn't business. This is a, 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 an advance of the kingdom of God. It's, a, it's a trying to reach, um, to drive back uh, the darkness of lostness and to see people saved, and we need to be praying. I would ask you to uh, think about uh, ways that um, you could champion this, talk about it, um, ways to encourage Joel and, and Jennifer. Um, we're going to have an info meeting coming up May 21st. Yeah. You tell that? Yeah, a, yeah if, if you feel like God's stirring something in your heart or just want to follow along, um, you know, we're I'm looking to put together a leadership team and launch team that will help us get things going. Some of those people, will, they'll, they'll be going there and saying, this is, this is where God's calling us. This is our new church home. Um, there's going to be some people that might be sitting in this room right now who'd say um, what I've heard described as you could be a, a scaffolding person. You could, might be uh, say, hey, I'll come there for three or six months and I'll help with this or that just so like, you know, as you get things going, those areas are covered, and then you'll just hop right back into the life here. And so we need people like that. If, if there's anything stirring your heart where you might say, yeah, I'd like to learn more, um, we'll have an informational meeting on Sunday, May 21st, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, Campus View Church of Christ is right there in the heart of Five Points, and they have allowed us to have this meeting there. And, um, and then if you want to receive updates, I'm trying to put together just a list. Maybe that's, that's a good action step. If you're like this morning, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I would love to know more. Um, you can just text that number and uh, we'll get you on a mailing list. The thing that... Sorry, on the, on the way out yeah. too. We'll have, we'll have a handout. So we'll have this on there and we'll have some other questions that are, will be answered. And... Um, it also has some prayer points. So even if you're like, look, uh, I, I love what you're doing. This is awesome. You can at least pray. Um, if, if you're not, you say, this is awesome, but I, this, obviously I'm not going, then pray along with us as our church does this. And there's some prayer points on that handout that you can get. In closing, I just, I want to uh, remind you that what we're talking about is, is bigger than any one of us. It's bigger than yourself. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than our church. We don't have all the answers right now. We, we're taking a step of faith. We don't know um, how many people would be. I don't know. I'm looking around the room thinking, uh, you know, there's, there isn't going to be a draft. You know, like Joel's not going to get to pick <laughs> those 10 and, you know, me say, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you those four. But we'll put you in the transfer portal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe there's a transfer portal. Um, that, but I want you to just think about, when you think about your life and your church this morning, to think about, God, is there some way I can be involved? And I'm, this, it's something that's just be bigger than life. It's bigger than me. And, and, and those 10 people in 1880, they're a part of something that's bigger than them today. Those 10 people, I don't think, would have any idea of what I'm about to share, of you, share with you but on Wednesday, I pray for people that are scattered around the globe that have come out of our church, and now they're serving somewhere in the kingdom of God. And I looked over that list this morning, and I realized that there are people in at least uh, 10 different 
states of the U.S. serving in vocational ministry that came through our church. Ten different states. I looked at that list and realized that I was praying for people that have come through our church that are now serving in vocational ministry in 15 different countries. And when I look at that list, I realize that there are people that have been sent out from our church that are serving in vocational ministry on five different continents. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're talking about today is us continuing to say, God, we want to be obedient to make disciples of all nations, baptize them, and teach them to obey everything that you've commanded. Amen. God, help us. Mm -hmm. Be faithful. God help us be wholehearted. If you're here today and you've never trusted Jesus and you hear all of this conversation, I want to tell you, you trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior is what this is all about. And today would be a great day for you to call out to Jesus and ask him to save you and follow him then in baptism like we saw others do that earlier today. Father, would you help us be faithful to the Great Commission? Our dependence is on you. In Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen.